Um, we're going to be taken through Rwanda's affordable housing uh, strategy and the programs that, uh, that the country is undertaking. Uh, the gentleman to take us through that is a civil engineer by profession and is also the director general of the Rwanda Housing Authority. For those of you that may not know, the arm of Rwanda that is responsible for delivering our different affordable housing programs is the Rwanda Housing Authority. So uh, you're welcome, Felix. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank the Chairman of African Union for Housing Finance as well as the board members uh, for actually having chosen Rwanda as a, a, pro a proper place where this conference should take place. So people are complaining, maybe you are not seeing my face. Let me remove this mask. <laughs> so, uh, dear chairman, CEO Sheta Freak, representatives of uh, different uh, financial institutions, members of the private sector. Uh, it's my honor to be here today just to take you through what Rwanda has achieved so far in terms of affordable housing. So I won't take much of your time. I think Honorable Minister has said, uh, has tried to elaborate different policies of this government towards provision of affordable housing. So what I'm going to, to present now, just to take you through through what we managed to do as a Rwanda Housing Authority, which is an institution in charge of housing in this country. So actually the great mandate falls in providing affordable housing. So, but it's a little bit challenging as I will show you throughout this presentation. Oops. Okay. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. So the presentation is about affordable housing strategy and the program in Rwanda. So we will be, we'll go through this content, why affordable housing? I will not spend a lot of time talking about this topic because uh, Honorable Minister has talked about this. Even the CEO, Sheikh Tafrik, has talked about this. So what is the target group? What, how do we define affordability in our in Rwandan context? Maybe we would love to hear from you guys, for, to hear from uh, different exper experiences and we can even change the, the definition of affordability. So we'll talk about incentive programs which are currently available in this country. And then we talk about the financing scheme. We'll also talk about other proposed programs because we, as we moved on with the implementation, actually we have realized that there are different challenges we have never thought about before. So we, that's how we keep on evolving we keep on reviewing the policies to see how better we can improve uh, on, both on, on the supply side as well as on the demand side. So why affordable housing? Uh, so as of we talk, uh, just referring to the census which took place in 20, uh, 2017, we, we, the Rwandan population living in urban areas was evaluated at uh, 18%. But country, Rwanda, uh, uh, Rwanda's vision is just to have the population living in cities accruing to 70%. 70 you can imagine uh, how much housing units will be needing by that time. So this is why the government has thought of putting in place a f uh, legal framework or uh, a scheme that may attract the private sector to come in and try to help us why we are trying to, to reach this target. So the recent study 
undertaken by IGC in 2018, it has showed that we need at least 310,000 houses uh, to be built uh, within a period of 2017 up to 2032. So this is a huge uh, number of houses that uh, government alone cannot actually put in place. That's where the private sector needs to come in and actually uh, plays a, a vital role. So uh, now, when you actually, I liked the way the CEO structured the, 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 the speech because whatever we do, uh, our main focus should be looking at this low income group. How can we actually help them to get shelters at low cost? but with a good quality as well. So that's how the government actually has tried to, uh, to look at different angles and see what we can do towards uh, fulfilling that uh, mandate. So the target group, according to that study, this is a pyramid which um, came out of that study. You can see at the bottom of the pyramid, we have a group of people uh, which is earning between almost nothing up to 200,000 Rwandan francs per month. So in the middle, uh, there we have a group capable of earning 200,000 up to 700,000. So this is, this is the part where we think uh, that group can afford or can be able to... to, to, to uh, to service, the, to service the, the loans or to get the mortgage loans uh, whenever there is a, just a supply side which can provide uh, houses at cheap, cheap cost, cheap prices. So at the apex of the pyramid, we have the, the, that income group which earns more than 700,000 per, per month. So this, actually normally we don't target this group because they are capable of buying uh, based on the market prices. So the main focus for the government now is to go in that middle part, as well as the part which is at the bottom. So, but as you see, the percentages show that most of the people, I mean, the big part of our population, it fall, they, fall, uh, they fall under that category of people uh, earning between zero to 200,000 per month. So this part, uh, it needs a great involvement of the government because that's why we, class, we classified it as a, a social rental housing. Now we are not saying that these people can afford shelters, cannot afford buying houses, but we, we try to put up a mechanism of how we can help them to get, to get social rental houses. Uh, I don't know how many of you have been in this country maybe in 10 years, but you know there is a program that has been inaugurated by the country of providing uh, or of building IDP model villages. IDP model villages, uh, those are integrated development program whereby we target a group uh, within a remote area uh, who do not have uh, a better condition of living and then we try to build the houses for them they, actually, the government contributes almost everything for those guys to get shelters. So we think of doing the same for this category, which is at the bottom. So, uh, as we go on, I have tried to tell you actually the categories of the population we have in this country. Uh, and also, uh, let me talk about the expenditures. As per the study that has been undertaken by AFR, but which is yet to be published, it showed that uh, most of the urban holds, households, they spend, in, on average, 15% of their income on the housing, uh, on maybe to service uh, the, the law, the mortgage, their mortgage loans or to pay their rentals. So you, you can see that we have a very long way to go. That's why I do believe, and we 
uh, we expect a lot from you to hear from the experiences in other countries. How do you manage to, 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 to help these people who cannot actually uh, gain more on a monthly basis? What do you do to provide shelters for them? Now, as I've been saying, actually we, have, we can categorize the population we have in three categories as we try as well to see the way of helping them. So we have the first category whereby they can actually they can afford to own a house. That's a category earning up to 1.2 million Rwandan francs per month. We have a second category where we need to... Uh, to, 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 to provide affordable houses. Otherwise, if the government does not chip in and try to help, the, 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 we, know, we all know the construction costs. If we say, we tell developers to go and construct the houses without any contribution from the government, in the end also, those houses can, will not be afforded by this category. So we need, we have tried to create like a, a framework whereby we facilitate developers we contribute, we bring in some incentives so that in the end, whatever they produce can be afforded, can be cheap for this category. So the third category, this is what I'm, I was talking about. This is a category where the government needs to play a vital role, actually to do everything for them. Not everything, but maybe they, ha they will have to bring in some contribution. But the big part actually is played by the government. So this is the category which earns below 200,000 per month, where we, we've been thinking of providing these social affordable rentals. Now, as I told you, although we have different framework, uh, that where we are trying to help developers to, to build affordable houses, but we, uh, on our way, we have encountered different challenges. Among those challenges, maybe developers who are here will talk uh, in detail about that. It's about the selling price. Now, according to our regulations currently, uh, for us to, to judge that the house is affordable, it doesn't have to go beyond 35 million francs. So this is something which developers have been complaining about, but also think about the, 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 the income the, the, which our population are, are actually earning on a monthly basis. If we do increase this selling price, in the end it might not be affordable. So that's why we tried to sit together to see how can we actually, uh, you as developers, yes, you build and you get some profit out of there, but also we, we, we also as government get to our objective of providing affordable houses to the, to the population. That's what we try to look uh, to create a balance whereby we, we said, look, come, invest your money, but we, we as government, we are going to contribute in terms of providing infrastructure support. Infrastructure, we mean roads, electricity, water. I know most of the developers who are here, they know actually how we do that analysis. And so far, I will talk about it. We have a number of projects where we try to support. And we keep on, we are keep, we keep on looking which way to, to support uh, Thada so that actually the products which comes of, uh, out of the project ca can even be more affordable than we think today. So now, uh, we, according to the policy which is ongoing today, uh, so the, 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 the maximum house unit size was uh, 95 square meters. And recently we, we sat together with the developers, we said with this big size, actually it won't, it won't be, uh, it will be luxurious. And what we, yet what we want is not just something luxurious, but we want uh, everyone and to have a decent house. So we tried to, to say, let's do have a variety uh, of housing typologies ranging from, ranging from one to three bedrooms with the, um, with the 
a floor area which varies between 55 square meters up to 80 square meters. So in this way, we are trying to help developers not to construct those big units, but the smaller units which comply with everything. That can help all where Rwanda and all any other citizen of this country can settle in and feel comfortable. So now we have also tried to reduce number of pro units per project up to 100. Instead of targeting these big developers, we said, look, so as we are trying to move on, as we are trying to build this uh, sector, let's, let's target as well these small developers who can afford the building up to 100 uh, units. So this is something else we have. We are trying to look at different angles and to bring in some innovation or some new ideas so that we can actually sustain this scheme of affordable housing. So the other challenge was about the number of housing uh, uh, units we require per he hectare. Normally, according to the uh, current policy, uh, we, we've been requesting developers to provide at least 70 dwelling units per hectare, 70 affordable dwelling units. And uh, developers, our fellow developers said, no, there is no way you can make profit if you keep the number of units at, at this rate. So we are trying to look at how to minimize, can, can we minimize the number of affordable uh, units uh, uh, per hectare so that the developer, whatever he constructs beyond uh, that number, he can be able to sell them at the market rates. Actually, normally it was, uh, the ratio was uh, 70 dwelling units, which are affordable, and 30% which the developer can sell at the market rate. So with, with that ratio, so they have been complaining actually that the, the the affordable housing are not profitable. So we, we, we are trying to, to look at which number can we really uh, fix and that can be, uh, 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 can make a good deal on both sides. So I think we are expecting from this conference, from this uh, workshop to learn from the experiences from other countries so that at least we finalize this review and move ahead with something which is attractive on the demand side. So now, something else we're looking into, it's just to call developers, please, whenever you come to invest in this country in terms of affordable housing, try to bring in a new technology because that's where you can reduce at maximum the construction cost and in the end have a unit, a housing unit which is cheap. Uh, so let me try to be quick. Uh, I've, I've been trying to elaborate more on how we work. So this is, the, this is the review we are trying to do in terms of incentive scheme. I told you about reducing the number of units, uh, I mean of targeting even the developers who can afford, who can build 100 units instead of targeting only the big developers who are able to build like more than 500 or 1,000 or 10,000. So now currently the government is looking uh, on how to establish, uh, no, no, is looking into uh, considering land as well as part of the uh, incentive package. This is something which is being discussed. We haven't yet reached to the level of uh, confirming this, but I'm trying to, to bring this out so that you can discuss when in these three days working session you'll be having, you can keep on brainstorming and maybe uh, we can get something really helpful out of those discussions. So we are looking as well on um, exempting taxes whenever it's about the affordable housing project. We are looking into providing off-take guarantee, but this is really something tricky. Uh, on the government side, we think, we. we we, we, we are still discussing about it, this. Currently, as I said, from since 2015, the government decided to support investors in affordable housing with infrastructure. So this is something we do, and most of you developers who are here, they know. They have even submitted the application files for infrastructure support. So try to keep on brainstorming on these points, and 
we really want to hear from others, from other countries, how, do, how did you succeed in uh, this field of affordable housing so that we can learn from there and try to build a sustainable or a helpful framework in terms of affordable housing in Rwanda. So uh, the financing mechanism, the, the government has tried to establish a fund whereby beneficiaries can actually get loans at, uh, at a very low interest rate, of, which goes up to 11%. And uh, actually, this was one way of attracting investors because we say, come, build, the market is there. So I think uh, this was a way of uh, attracting developers. And so far, we haven't yet reached to a very interesting step, but I think with this fund uh, available, it's one step uh, moving ahead. So other initiatives we are looking into, it's just to establish Rwanda Mortgage Financing Company. Uh, we are looking as well into real estate investment trusts, and we are looking into establishing a rental housing scheme, uh, rent or rent to own because I, as I told you, most of the category, I mean, most of the population of this country, they do fall below, uh, below, below the affordable housing scheme. So we need to come up with the innovative scheme, such as rent and rent to own. And I know in, in, Af in Africa, there are countries who are, who are already advanced in terms of this scheme. We can learn from you and try to do the same in this country. So uh, we shall add our programs which, uh, that we are trying to look at. We are trying to put in place affordable housing developer finance scheme. So, but the Honorable Minister said, instead of always relying on the financial institutions, why not um, building a system? Why not uh, relying on the market uh, stock exchange? Why not? We, we have to come up with uh, innovative, other innovative ways of sourcing funding for the housing sector to, to boost. So we, we, are, we have tried with the help of BRD. Uh, we, we are currently looking into developing a scheme of, uh, for a subsidized, subsidized rental and the rent to own housing program. So I think this will try to help us to cater for that group with low income. So, uh, we are looking as well into incentivized social housing associations uh, or corporations for implementation of social housing uh, schemes. Let me go straight now to the point, to the achievements we have done, uh, we, we have made so far. I think this is the interesting part and uh, uh, it really shows that despite all of these challenges we have met, we had so far, we are trying to move so, and try, try to solve as well the challenges as we move on. So now, in terms of affordability, there are six projects which have already been completed uh, and which delivered 852 uh, dwelling units. I will not go into details into this. Uh, it's just to show you that uh, this is a small number. We have a very long way to go. So we need to keep on reforming, keep, keep on reviewing the policies we have so that the developers can get interested. Uh, all both sides, the demand side and supply side can really feel comfortable in terms of affordable housing. So these are the ongoing projects we have, almost 14 projects. I will not go one by one. It's just to show you a picture of how many dwelling units we can expect within this coming three years. Uh, but some of these projects, actually, some of them have encountered serious issues, financial constraints, but this is something normal in a project. So in a project, you need to keep on planning, keep on reviewing, but we are, we are trying actually to help even those projects who, who, which, uh, which are still lagging behind and try to work together and see how they can kick off and speed up. Uh, this is one example of a social housing project which the government put in place. The, uh, some of who are familiar with the Kigali, 
there is a place called Ivo Sanza. This is where the government of Rwanda has had already secured uh, 21 hectares, and out of that land, we have constructed so far 420 dwelling units completed, and people have already shifted in there. Uh, and we have uh, another set of houses which is being uh, constructed, uh, which is made of 840 dwelling units. So this is to show you how government of Rwanda is trying to, so, to, to solve or to deal with the, the issue of informal settlements or to, to, to provide decent houses for Rwandans. So we have another project which is still ongoing. Uh, yes, it, it, it's a project which is delayed for different reasons, but uh, we have all, uh, recently resumed the works and the DDG RBC is here, R, uh, RISSB is here in, he will talk about it maybe uh, throughout this uh, session. We have a uh, project which was called the Kabuga 1 and 2. Uh, th these are the de small developers. Actually, uh, they, they helped us to, to see that when we talk about affordable housing, it's something doable. So it's a cooperative, that of, a cooperative of reserve forces which built these houses at a low cost. We've, we've been surprised actually with what they did. It was like one, the first project uh, that we called affordable uh, project, affordable housing project in this country. So they showed us that making affordable houses, it's possible whenever there is a, a strong partnership between private sector and the government. So these guys, they started building and we came in as a government, we provided infrastructure and actually, they have been selling the house dwelling units at a very low cost that you can never expect. They have been selling it at 70 million Rwandan francs for a three-bedroom house, which is really a great achievement if we do try the current market price. So uh, these are the projects in the pipeline. I will not uh, spend a lot of time th talking about this, this project because they are still at the planning phase. Um, so we don't know actually whether they will materialize or not. So these are the applications we have received from different uh, developers and we are still working with them to make them happen. So as I do conclude, actually uh, to interest the developers who are around, we have so far uh, approved infrastructure support for these six projects. Uh, the, the infrastructure support was approved the, the, by the government. Uh, for Batsinda, we have already delivered the first package of infrastructure project. For Kabuga 1, we, we, we already gave, gave that infrastructure support and the project is completed and the dwelling units have been sold. For Kabuga 2, Yes, we approved the infrastructure support, but the developer is still actually reorganizing himself to, to kick off with the works. For Busanza 1, that's the project I've been showing you, where the government actually constructed 420 dwelling units, and they are already occupied. For Rugarama and Masaka, these are projects which are currently uh, on hold for different reasons, but the infrastructure support is approved as well. So let me try to go quickly through different technologies we have, which construction materials we use so far in affordable housing sector. So the number one is Adobe Bricks. I've seen Gayatri, is here? Yes, she's around. She helped us a lot to, to, come, up, to come up with a strong mixing ratio on how to do Adobe Bricks, which are harder, almost at the same, stiffness as the, the cement blocks. She's really appreciate the work he did, Gayatri. I think it, it will really help the Rwandan population, especially if those ones with the low income to, to have shelters. So we have number two compressed. Let me go back a bit. Yeah, we have compressed stabilized half blocks we have this um, SCAT technology, which the minister was referring to in, in, 
in the morning. Uh, we have, we have uh, prefab for Strotech panels, but uh, frankly speaking, we haven't yet exploited this technology when it comes to constructing the outer uh, walls. We have pre, uh, pre, precast concrete. We have light speed. Is ADHI around, Solomon? Uh, yeah, he's, he's around, yeah. So we have, the, we have autoclaved aerated concrete. We have um, Maladi technology. So far, we, 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 have, got, we have approved these uh, 10, te 10 technologies, 12. Yeah, you, you will go through this presentation. Whoever wants to look at it, the presentation will be there to have an idea of the construction technologies we have so far in affordable housing sector in Rwanda. Uh, so let me talk lastly on the land bank because this is the main challenge. Actually, we are discussing as government on to see how secure, to secure more land banks because uh, whenever an investor or developer wants to to invest in this country. The first thing to look at is the availability of the land. So we have been actually having this uh, challenge of availing the land. So that's how, how the government came up with an idea of starting having land banks across the country so that in the future, uh, whenever the developer comes, it will be easier for us to avail it at the cheap cost without necessarily going into expropriations. So these are the available hectares we have across the country. For local government, in Ikigali, we have 70 hectares. Uh, RHA, we have 40 hectares. And RSSB, as well as BRD, they are more than 257 hectares. So uh, we do believe with the little we have in terms of land, we can kick off and uh, try to meet the target of 2024, 20, uh, whereby we want uh, the population rate to be at 35% uh, urbanization rate. So I do thank you very, uh, very much for paying attention to this presentation. Uh, thank you so much. So time isn't in our favor, but I'm going to be able to take two maximum three comments. Uh, as, as you think about that, two things to consider. Everyone who registered for this conference will get all the presentations uh, th that we have. That's number one. So you'll be able to get that presentation. A small clarification. When uh, Felix, with your permission, I'll just make that clarification. When he said the very cheap house of 70 million, I think you meant 17 million. Yes, 17, yes. So it is about $17,000. No, no, it's approximately $17,000. Yeah. So, um, any question or comment? Thank you for the clarification. We were all wondering who can afford a very affordable $70,000 US dollar house. Um, Thank you very much. It was a very informative presentation about the, the status on the ground. And uh, I must say, as a, as a developer and also as a member of the AUHF, it is very impressive where Rwanda has come in three years. I was here three years ago for the IFC housing conference um, when they were wondering how do we incentivize, how do we get things moving. And to see all of this uh, in play is very exciting. My, my question is around the mortgages, which I think a lot of the players on the ground would be also interested to understand. So it seems there is a lot of incentives for developers, for infrastructure and for mortgage financing to happen. How is it looking for on the demand side? Um, what is the process? People go to any commercial bank, they can walk in and apply for a mortgage and these facilities are being availed. I would love to hear a little bit more about that. Thanks, David. Uh, Please a reminder that uh, if you have a question or comment, kindly say your name and where you're coming from. Uh, we also have a, a session on mortgages later. We'll also have another one on, on building technologies. So uh, if, if you feel that you have missed out on that one, uh, Felix, you'll answer that one a little bit later. Um, any other question or comments? Any other? 
So Felix, maybe you could use that microphone to, to just comment on that. Thanks. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. As I say, actually, uh, the government did a lot on the side of uh, demand. But when it comes to supply side, uh, in terms of securing the farming the resources, there is a, there is still a big problem because we haven't yet put in place uh, a fund that can help uh, developers to, be, to get cheap loan, cheap construction loans. So currently what we do is just approaching the financial commercial institutions to get the funding or to, uh, to get the funding from outside, but there is no actually uh, any other framework in place in terms of uh, providing financial resources to developers. Yeah, for people buying, it's, it's a, as I said, we have a fund which is being managed by uh, BRD. So, and then commercial banks, they go in there. They say we have, uh, for instance, customers, clients who wants to buy houses. And then they, they get it like, a, like a, an, an arrangement with the BRD to get the part of that fund so that they can also uh, advance the, the, the loans to the, those customers at the cheap, cheap, uh, at cheap loans. So the, the part, the, the, the demand side actually is secured because BRD gives money to the commercial banks and the commercial banks finances as well, the customers, they help them to get cheap loans. I'm sure. I'm sure we will get to explain that uh, 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 in, in fine detail. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in uh, thanking Felix for a fantastic presentation.